at the evolving church and um i just want to say if you have any question um as we look at this study uh please write it down and give to the ushers you can if you're online you can put it on the chat uh, because after this study we'll be uh, taking a panel discussion that will be answering the question from this study praise the lord in matthew chapter 16 matthew chapter 16 from verse 16 Matthew chapter 16, from verse 16. Matthew chapter 16, from verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bad Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you believe that, say a louder amen. amen. You see, no matter how we define the church, the church is about the people, the church is not about property. Uh, the ecclesia church, if you define the ecclesia church, that is the universal church, it is made up of people washed by the blood. Or we can come down to the denomination level uh, an extensive family of christians or we can come down to your location church which is an household of christians within the same family but irrespective of how we define the, um, the church it is made up of people it is made up of you and it's made up of me so when jesus said the gates of hell that means death will not prevail against church is saying that the gates of hell will not prevail against you Oh, your amen is too small. The gates of hell will not prevail against me in Jesus' name. We are looking at the evolving church. Evolving. What does evolving mean? It means it's moving. It means it's changing. It means it's revolving. And it's very typical of God's ways. Yes, God said I cannot change. God himself, his nature cannot change. Hallelujah. He said, for I am the Lord, I change not. But God loves motion. His ways are past findings. His ways and works are always evolving. He created the earth, and the earth has been in motion since then. Hallelujah. We have day, we have night. We have seasons and different seasons. We have ocean on the move. We have seas and rivers always moving. Even if you look at your body, you have your lungs always on the move. You have blood flowing in your body. What happens once the blood stops flowing? What happens? Death. Once the lung stops moving, what happens? Death. So God loves motion. And you can never predict God. You cannot predict God. You cannot run a regression analysis on God. You will never, you will never get any good score. Uh, you, when you think Abraham was uh, childless, and you think Abraham will die childless, God said, no, you'll become a father of nations. Uh, Moses, we thought Moses was useless. And he became a commander-in-chief. When you thought David was classless, he's living in the bush. All of a sudden, God said he would be the king. When the wine finished, the water of life stood up and it turned water into wine. Five loaves of bread and two fishes and the bread of life stood up and he multiplied it to feed 5,000. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of the storm, when there was storm everywhere, Jesus was still moving. He was walking on the water. Hallelujah. And the devil got tired of Jesus. He said, I'm tired of Jesus' movement. And he put Jesus into the grave. And he said, let's kill him. Let's bury him. And they took him and they buried him. And he got into the grave. But even in the grave, Jesus was still moving. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the church is marching on. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. The message is eternal. The message does not change. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus only is our message. Hallelujah. That cannot change. Any other message is fallacy. The mandate does not change. What is the mandate? Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witness unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and other the other most part of those stuff cannot change. The message, the mandate cannot change. So what is evolving? What is evolving? The members are evolving. The methods are evolving. The ministry 
evolving. And I pray you will not be stagnant. Tell your neighbor, I pray you will not be stagnant. Sephaniah chapter 1 verse 12. What does he say? I read this verse and I was shocked. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lambs and punish the men who are settled in complacency. God said, I will punish the men who are stagnant. I pray you will not be stagnant in Jesus' name. Amen. Point one, the evolving members. The evolving members. The members of the church are always evolving. The demographics are always changing. The age changing. Old, older adults are becoming seniors. Young adults are becoming old adults. Youths are becoming young adults. Children are becoming youths. And it's so natural because there will surely be physical growth. Generation evolves. And a new generation is here. And another one is coming. And God is not complacent about it. The Bible says his mercies are from generation to what? To generation. Psalm 100 verse 5. He said, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endured to all generations. So you see that God is interested in every generation. But the devil does not like it. You know, the devil does not like it. When uh, Moses, God told Moses, go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Do you know what Pharaoh did at the time? Pharaoh said, now you can go with your men. Go with your men. But leave the women and the children behind. And that's what the devil wants us to do. Go with the men, but leave the children leave the the women there yeah, why the women will birth the children the next generation right and the children are the next generation you know just go with the men go with the men leave leave the next generation behind but god refused god said let my people go no one will be left behind in jesus name we are taking everybody along and everybody will evolve with us in jesus name the dynamics of lives are changing new things are coming up if you mention cassette player to our youth now, they will think it's the name of an animal. You know, many things have gone obsolete. Like we've been hearing since we started this conference, and uh, we live in an online world. Social media, YouTube, Facebook, WhatsApp. Yes, WhatsApp is also I know some of you using WhatsApp don't know it's social media. WhatsApp is also social media. And those days we used to complain. We cannot do evangelism in the US because of personal space. Everybody, you have to respect my personal space. But internet does not have respect for personal space. Everybody is in your personal space, am I right? That is why you put a video on YouTube, somebody is putting thumbs down, you don't even know the person. You put a post, somebody is commenting, you don't. nobody cares about personal space on, on online. That is why you, you have to take the message into their personal space. We will take Jesus into their personal space in Jesus' name. How can you do church in this age without an online presence? Who do you want to reach without an online presence? The devil has penetrated TikTok. Do you know what TikTok is? The devil has invaded Instagram. The devil has destroyed Snapchat. Some of us are just downloading Telegram. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. I was an, you know, I heard this news, a high school student, now they can order drugs from Snapchat. She ordered the drugs on Snapchat. The parents didn't know. They delivered it to her house. The parents did not know. They thought she was reading. She collected the drug, went into her, into her room. They thought she was reading. She overdosed and she died in her room. The, 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 the mother came later and found that she was dead. She, they thought she was reading. What happened? Because of Snapchat. See, the devil has invaded everywhere. Believers, we need to wake up. And the church will wake up in Jesus' name. Some of us advertise our business on Google. Why are you not advertising the church on Google? But the Lord will, the Lord will help us. We've heard so much in this conference, and the grace to do what we've heard, it will grant unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. The domain is changing. See, if you cannot fit into the change, then you cannot make a change. How can you talk about cassette player to those who are streaming on Spotify? If you do not evolve, there will be a language barrier. And you wonder why, they, why is there so much confusion in my church? Because it's like your church is like a tower of Babel. You cannot build without speaking the same language. You cannot build without speaking a language everybody understands. And you need to know that language is not a repetition of words. Language is a continuation of vision. If you want to kill a tribe, you kill the language. Stop speaking their language. 
we must learn to speak the right language to this generation. A, a denomination that does not provide relevance to the next denomination, next generation does not have a future. A denomination that does not provide relevance to the next generation does not have a future. It's good to think local. It's good to think global, but we need to start thinking generational. Amen. You see, the motto should be, we want to reach every nation in our generation. But it's better to reach every generation in our nation. You understand? We want to reach every generation in our world, in our nation. Generations are not replacements, they are reinforcements. So when we reach out to the next generation, we are actually reinforcing what we know. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's go to point two, the evolving methods. The evolving methods. Men are actually God's method. You are God's method. Turn to your neighbor and say you are God's method. Oh, you are not very sure. Look to your neighbor eyeball to eyeball and say you are God's method. God is always looking for men to carry the new wave of his glory. God is looking for men and women to carry, you know, to, to go into the new level of dimension. Hallelujah. And for you to be that man, number one, there has to be transformation. Somebody say transformation. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Transformation comes by a renewing, a continuous evolving of your mind. That is when transformation comes. You cannot solve problems with the same mindset that created them. Your mindset has to change. There must be something changing in your mindset. Your mindset is so important. You see, a mindset is like uh, when you put cement and water. You, put, you see how hard it becomes, right? It takes the word of God. It takes the Holy Spirit to break that mindset. And if you want to make a change, your mindset will have to be changed. When your mindset is changed, there is transformation because transformation comes by the renewing. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your word, of your mind. Except there is a transformation, God cannot use you. But I pray that God will transform our hearts. He has been transforming it since we came here. And the Lord will finish his work in Jesus' name. If you transform your mind, then you can be part of the new formation. You know, if you watch soccer, you know that when the manager sees that goals are not coming in, what does he do? He changes the formation, right? Then he says, okay, let's change some things. And God changes his formation every now and then because he wants to win the battle of the gospel. Then if you are not ready, what does he do? He substitutes you. But I pray you will not be substituted. I say you will not be substituted. You will be part of the new formation of God in Jesus' name. One, transformation. Two is vision. Vision. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. And when there is no vision, the people do what? The people perish. The vision is not the mandate. The mandate is clear. The mandate does not change. But how do we carry out the mandate? mandate that is when the vision comes in. The vision is the vehicle for the mandate. And God is looking for men and women with vision. And I pray you will have vision. I pray God will open your eyes in Jesus' name. And then this comes. You know, sometimes we have vision, but the problem with us, we don't like revision. For every vision, there is time for revision. Somebody say revision. God loves to revise his vision. God loves to revise his vision. And that's why we have been here. You know, we've been hearing a lot of examples. You remember Abraham? He told Abraham, kill your son. That was a vision. Kill your son. That was a vision. But when Abraham was about to kill the, uh, the son, God said, don't touch that child. That is revision. What if Abraham said, no, 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 no. No, God, you told me I must kill this child. <laughs> you told me I saw it in my dream. You gave me that vision on that night, 1984. I must kill this child. I'm not going to change. Abraham would have killed his future. Abraham would have killed his vision. So yeah, we must have vision, but we must be ready for revision. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We heard it yesterday, smite the rock. That was a vision. But when he got another time, speak to the rock. That is a revision. Okay, so for every vision, there is a revision. God told Peter, he told the other disciples, we are going to the uttermost part of the earth. But Peter did not understand uttermost part. Peter did not understand the uttermost part. 
and God picked on Paul. Don't be scared to revise your vision. That's why we came for this conference. You see that you have vision for my church, but now you are hearing new things. Don't be scared of revision. The Lord will take us higher in Jesus' name. Number three, you must have an implementation plan. Implementation plan. Anytime God gives you a vision, don't be in a hurry to run. Ask God, how do I do it? How do I carry this vision out? The problem is most times we carry new visions. We, see new, we, we get new visions, but we carry out that new vision with old methods. Jesus said new wines don't do well in old bottles. So don't assume that you know how to do it. Ask God, how do I do it? Uh, the vision came to Mary. Mary, you are going to have a child. His name shall be called Jesus. Now, if Mary assumed that, oh, ah, I'm already, I'm already in engagement with Joseph, all right? And you said, I'm going to have a baby, and his name shall be called Jesus. Ah, okay, I know how to do it. Joseph! <laughs> Somebody came to me, in fact, he confirmed our wedding. He confirmed our marriage. Let's get married right now. The angel said that Jesus is going to be born. Okay, now let's do our thing. We would have, she would have scattered that plan. Am I right? But Mary was wise. After the angel finished, she said, how shall these things be? That is asking for implementation. And the, the angel said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Hallelujah. He said, it's not the right. You don't, don't think of that method. Yeah, that's the method. But this is different. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. Implementation. God will give us implementation plans in Jesus' name. And number four is saturation saturation if you want to be used by god you have to be filled with the holy spirit you have to be full of the holy spirit the holy spirit is the master of methods the holy spirit is the creator of creativity and he reveals his methods to men who are full and saturated within first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to 10 but as it is written, I had not seen, not ear or nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his word, by his spirit. For his spirit, for the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God is not by power, is not by mind, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. The Holy Spirit is what makes the difference between an oracle and an orator. The Holy Spirit is what makes the difference between a writer or a worker and a witness. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon us in Jesus' name. You don't need position to make impact. Stephen was serving food. He didn't have any position uh, among the apostles. But he also served the bread of life to the city. Hallelujah. Philip was just, was not one of the apostles, but he was full of the Holy Ghost. And like I, like I always like to tell the young adults, and the, 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 he was so full of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit booked his flight. Can you imagine? The Holy Spirit is the one that books your flight. I said, Philip, he said, no, let's go to Azotus. Come, let's go. The Holy Spirit, he, that is, he was so full of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit scheduled his flight. I pray we'll be full of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. We are God's method, and I pray we'll be transformed. I pray God will give us vision. God will give us strategy for implementation, and the Lord will fill us with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Point three, the evolving minister. The evolving minister. A minister is not one who just prepares message. A minister is the one who is fulfilling his God-given assignment in reaching out to souls. And we are all ministers. We should all be ministers working in the vineyard of God. After you become a member of the body of Christ, the next thing, you become a minister of Christ. Irrespective of what you are doing, those in the electronics, those playing the piano, even the, the brethren outside trying to arrange people over to park, they are also ministering. Am I right? We are all ministers. You don't need a pulpit to be a minister. The question is, what are you doing? Ask your neighbor, what are you doing? Oh, be bold. Ask your neighbor, what are you doing? The thing is, are you fulfilling your ministry? Or are you waiting for a title before you can fulfill your ministry? 
Or are you waiting for a position before you can fulfill your ministry? Don't seek position without fulfilling your purpose. No, my prayer is every day is I don't want any position to hinder the prosperity of my soul. I don't want any position to hinder me from achieving God's purpose. Luke chapter 12 from verse 42. Luke chapter 12 from verse 42. Luke chapter 12 from verse 42. The Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward? Whom his master will put in charge over his household to give his servants their portion of food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master finds so doing. When he arrives, I assure you, I most solemnly say to you, it will put him in charge of all position. You see, the evolving minister is faithful and wise. You see two words there? He said, who is then faithful? And what is the second word? Wise. Faithfulness, you are full of faith in your God-given assignment. Wisdom, applying understood knowledge in fulfilling your assignment and your, your mandate. You acquire knowledge, and that's what we've been doing here. Please don't joke with it. Everything that has been given out, to use this tool, you don't just say, okay, I mean, they've said their own. <laughs> uh, they say we should use internet. Who has time for internet? These are tools that God, that God is giving to us. Let's use it to reach out to so That is applying wisdom. Many ministers are faithful, but they are not wise. Many ministers are faithful, but they are not wise. And that is the reason why you see a faithful worker is fired from his job. He said, I'm doing well. I don't know what's happening. I'm always there at 8 a.m. And I stay till 5 p.m. And I do everything they tell me to do. I'm faithful to my job. Why are you, why are you, why are you, why are you firing me? You're not developing yourself. You're not growing. You want to remain in that position continuously. Then when they don't need people, who will be the first person? Is the person, yeah, you're doing well. The problem is not faithfulness. The problem is wisdom. Who is then faithful and wise? Whom his master put in charge over his household. Faithfulness and wisdom, very, very important. The same thing in marriage. We have a lot of couples, they are faithful in what they are doing. Very faithful. But in marriage, you know, work out. Why? Wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Somebody say wisdom is the principal thing. Who is then faithful and wise? Whom is master we put in charge? Is the master that puts in charge over his household. Faithfulness is doing that thing that God has put in charge. Okay, you are wise when you are busy doing something God has not assigned to you. Who is then faithful and wise? Whom his master will put in charge over his household to give his servants their portion of food at the proper time. Due season. Do you all see due season here? Yeah. At the proper time. See, it's one thing to know how to do it. It's one thing to understand the times. Wisdom is knowing the time to give the food. Wisdom means you know and understand the times like men of Issachar. How do I give this food out? That is wisdom. Who is then faithful and wise? The Lord will help us. We will be faithful and wise in Jesus' name. You know, you can remain to be like Peter. And nothing is going to happen. I mean, you go to, you're going to get to heaven. I'm sure Peter got to heaven. Am I right? You can, yeah, you can remain like Peter. Preach to only people from your village. People that eat the same food with you. And stay there. You don't want to be involved in the next, next move of God. Yeah, no, 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 no issues. You will get to heaven. Just that the only thing is that you, the people you are supposed to reach, you will not have reached out to them. And that's why God said, Peter, he tried. Peter, Peter, Peter tried. But it's, no, no, no. You see, Peter was so used to his traditions. Peter was so used to regulations that don't regulate the heart for Jesus. You know, but then God said, okay, let's, let's, let's leave you alone. Stay there, Peter. Now, Paul, Paul, come on. Paul, I see that you have fire. Amen. You can do, and Paul did. He was ready to do everything to reach everybody in every generation. It was not easy. Is it easy? 
It was not easy, but it took time to seek knowledge. You think it's easy to speak different languages and preach the Bible in different languages? Trying to reach the youth, trying to reach the young adults, trying to reach the Greek, trying to reach Rome, trying to reach Athens. Paul was doing everything he wanted to do. He had to seek knowledge. He had to study the Bible. He had to read books. He said, give me those books. Let me read. He had to sweat in labor. He had to swallow insults. He had to suffer for his enlightenment. Sometimes he was stoned, but he was solid on his revelation. I pray we'll be like Paul. Oh, your amen is too small. Are you scared to be like Paul? Are you scared to be like Paul? To be able to, we had the pause. We had, we had the pause in Georgia. We had the pause in DC. We had the pause in Maryland. We had the pause in South Carolina, North Carolina. Are you scared to be like Paul? Tell your neighbor, better be like Paul. So that you will fulfill everything that God has placed in your hands. But His grace is sufficient for you. You know, one thing I like about Paul, even though he did everything, it was not by His grace. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, but by the grace of God. He said, but by, somebody said, but by the grace of God. He said, I am what I am. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. The grace of God will not be in vain in your life. The last person that led the prayer looked into my notes. <laughs> because he was praying about the grace to labor. And that's what I want to talk about. He said, was not even, but I labored more abundantly. It means that Paul received the grace to labor. Everything he was doing, going to Rome, going to Athens, go, he received the grace to labor. Why didn't Peter receive that same grace? I don't know. For you today, you have come here, that grace is coming upon you. You receive the grace to labor. Amen? There is grace. You see, the, the digital ecosystem... How will I do grace? How will I reach? I don't even understand the ecosystem. Don't place of going there. Ask for grace. When you ask for that grace, your eyes will open. Ah, your amen is too small. I say your eyes will open. And God will begin to give you implementation plan. This is how to go about it. If you don't do it, if you don't move, God will not move. Sometimes you have to move like Joshua. Until Joshua stepped his leg into River Jordan, he didn't part way. So if you are waiting and say, I have to do it like Moses, I have to raise my rod. God said, this time he's not raising your rod. Put your leg inside it. And as he stepped into that river, it parted. You will step the leg into that zone. And you will do what God wants you to do in Jesus' name. Who needs grace this morning? Who is ready to go the extra mile? Why not rise up on your feet and say, Lord, and say, Lord, I'm ready to evolve. Lord, I'm ready to be what you want me to be. Lord, I'm ready to move with the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm ready to do all that you want me to be. Lord, I receive grace this morning. I receive grace this morning. Make me that woman. Make me that man that you are looking for. The church is marching on and I will not be left behind. The church is marching on and I will not be left behind. Father, put in your fire. Put that fire in my bones. I'm ready for service. I'm ready for service. I'm ready for service. I'm ready for service. I'm ready to work for you. I'm ready to be transformed. I'm ready for my mind to change. Father, let there be a transformation this morning. Let there be a transformation in my heart. Let there be a transformation in my soul. Any previous mindset that I have had that is not in accordance to your word, Lord, I take it away. Father, change my mindset. Father, renew my mind. Father, renew my mind for this transformation. Father, renew my mind for this transformation. Father, renew my mind for this transformation. Father, renew my mind. I want to be that candidate you will use. I want to be that candidate you will use. Father, give me the grace to labor. Give me the grace to be like Paul. Ready to reach the unreachable. Ready to reach all sects of people. Ready to do all it takes to make sure your gospel is reached out to everyone. Father, we will not be tired. Father, we will not be weary. Father, we will not be tired. We'll be on fire for you. We'll be on fire for your you. We'll be on fire for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we'll pray.
Somebody say it louder. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, I pray you will give everyone understanding. And you give us the grace to be who you want us to be in Jesus' name. Father, let there be transformation in our lives. Father, I pray you give us vision. And you give us the grace to accept your revision. Father, I pray you give us implementation plan. And you will saturate every one of us with your power in the mighty name of Jesus. And many months to come, we will share testimonies of what you are doing through us in Jesus' name. Thank you because we've answered the Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed.